Well, good morning. How y'all doing? Good, good. And now you're like, wait a minute. You're not Pastor Allen. What is happening here? Well, let me tell you. Pastor Allen went to Washington, D.C. He's out there helping President Trump launch his presidential campaign. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. He's not. He's not. He actually is in Washington, D.C., uh, but that was to uh, celebrate Brooke Stewart, who got Teacher of the Year. They flew him up to Washington, D.C. Round of applause for Brooke. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And so anyways, if we had met, my name's Brady Mann. Um, I am kind of the utility guy around here. You know, it's like, uh, Brady could do it. You know what I mean? Like, um, so, and that involves everything from uh, preaching to manual labor to uh, working out the football team to doing the, the youth or the, the junior high. I mean, just whatever it is, you know. And it, what's cool is that's, that's been my prayer. My prayer is like, Lord, I am a, uh, I'm a willing vessel. I want to be used by you. Please use me and be ready. You, you, make that, you make that prayer. I promise you, get ready. Especially if Alan hears that you made that prayer, get ready. Get ready. It, it, you, will, you will be put to work. And, uh, but anyways, uh, it's funny. I, I, Alan calls earlier this week. He says, hey, I'll be out of town. I need you to step in. And I said, okay. And he goes, and I need you to do both services. And I'm like, I'm like, we have two services? What do you, but no, I'm kidding. But, but I mean, I'm an 11 o'clock guy, like tried and true. You are my peeps. You know what I mean? I sit right there. This is, that's like my comfort zone. And, uh, you know, my goal on Sunday mornings is to sleep as long as I physically can. I mean, I like want to get out of bed and I'm like, no, nope, you stay in there. Right, get those covers, bring them in tight. I'm in, and then I wake up and I get my cup of coffee, and then we're usually running late to church five minutes, you know? <clears throat> I mean, that's, that's our Sunday. And so anyways, I did get to meet a lot of new people in the 9 a.m., which was really, really cool. You'll have to, you'll have to go visit them one day. Um, <clears throat> so today we're on the subject of finance. We've been talking about finance. Alan's been giving you all kinds of concepts and things that you need to know to have a good financial life. Holler if you hear me, right? Right? We want a good, good financial life, don't we? Holler. Right? Yeah, you go. And, and so um, I'm going to keep talking about that. I've been in finance. I was adding it up, I guess, for 18 years. Isn't that shocking? I know. I know. You're like, how have you been doing anything 18 years? I, I know. But I have been, and... Um, it's been really cool because we've been able to learn and teach and share a lot of financial concepts that have blessed a lot of people, and um, it's been great. But we'll be talking about none of those today, okay? So you will not know um, anything more about finance, per se, than you did when, before you came in. However, if you do want to know, usually once a year, we have a kind of a financial meeting that we hold usually five or six weeks, and we talk about things like mutual funds and compound interest and uh, um, everything, every, everything you can imagine about finance and money. And is that good to know? Yeah, it is. If you want to accumulate some of it, it'd be good to implement some solid financial principles. So today, though, what we're going to do is, number one, before I go, I've got three points. But before we go into the three points, I have to make sure that our mind and heart is, is right. You've got to be able to receive the word, right? But if you have just a little bit of a thought that says, you know, I don't know if God really wants me to be successful. Or, or if, you know, I don't want to ask too much of God. Or, ah, I don't know. I mean, I know he wants me, you know, if I scrape by, that's good enough for God, right? You've got to take that thought. You've got to wad it up in a ball. Everybody do this, right? We're going to take that out. Right, put it in a ball, we're going to throw it in the dumpster, and we're going to light it on fire. You all with me? That is not the truth. Listen, our God is an abundant God. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And let me tell you, when he does it, he does it big. He goes big. Do you all know that? We serve a big God. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover some scriptures, and scriptures are good. But sometimes we just hear scriptures, we're like, yeah, I know that one. Got it. Got it, Brady. Know that one. And it's important, and you should know, and it should be in your heart. But what I really want you to do today is I want you to use some, just some huge, some human reasoning, some logic behind it, and go, what's God really like? And let's just think about it. Deal? So we're going to get that right 
first so that you can receive the points that we're going to talk about. And here we go. Before we go, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name given above every name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you that you're with us. Thank you uh, that, that when your people are gathered, you're in our midst. Thank you for giving us wisdom. Thank you for giving us knowledge and understanding. I pray that you speak through me and thank you by the power of your Holy Spirit, I get to deliver this message today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, oh, I, gotta, I get to do one more thing. I did this in the other one. It was kind of fun. Um, see if y'all, I, I got to have audience per- participation. So um, we believe the word of God will make a positive impact in your life if you hear it and? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. One more time. Do, okay, yeah, no, okay. I was like, I could just keep doing that. But, that, but yeah, I've been, I've been wanting to try that, and I got to do it twice today. If your dad, and I'm talking about earthly dad, was a billionaire with a B, that'd be kind of cool, huh? I mean, what, what's a billion dollars? That's, that's so we, we know what a million is, right? Which isn't as much as it used to be. We used to talk about being millionaires, right? Oh, one of these days, right? Now, you better, you better put a B on that if you want to make it, right? So, uh, but he's got a thousand million dollars, a thousand million. What financial worry could come up in your life that you did really, really shake you? Yeah, yeah maybe you're getting a little close to, close to uh, calling it on the, on the rent, you know? You'd be like, would you be worried? Your dad's got a thousand million dollars. And by the way, y'all like each other. You're not estranged. You like each other. He loves you. You love him. Would that be a good thing? Would you have a financial worry? Be honest. No, no, you wouldn't. Let me tell you something. Your heavenly father's got way more than a billion dollars. I mean, way more. I mean, like, is, is a, is a what, what is it? What's a high number? A quintri- quintrillion? Is that a word? Is that a word? A quint- I don't know. He's got that times infinity that's what he's dealing with and you know what else is cool is that he loves you way more than your earthly father could ever love you so not only does he have an unlimited supply but he actually loves you he loves you so much that he offered his son up on in in your behalf as you when you were still a sinner when we were still sinners he offered his son up for us a swap who in here could offer their son or daughter in the place for a hardened criminal that'd be a tough one mark <laughs> i'm talking okay <laughs> that's classic uh, but you, you see what i'm saying what kind of love is that what kind of love is that you know jesus prayed in matthew 6:10 this is actually the lord's prayer Do we remember it? Here we go. Let's try it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on. Time out. Time out. You know it. I believe you. That's good. That's good. That's impressive. He said, and who said this, by the way? Y'all met him, right? Jesus. Jesus said this. He said, when you pray, you need to pray on earth as it is in Heaven, well, what? Let's talk about it. What's heaven like? What is heaven like? I mean, is there like, you know, the across the track side of heaven? You know what I mean? Like, ooh, don't go over there. You know what I mean? Is, is that, is there that place in heaven? No. What about, what about, what are people living in? Are they living in tiny shacks? No, he said that he was going to build a what for us? A mansion. Can we say mansion in church? Is that okay? Right? He said he was, he said it. I didn't say it. He said it. We said, we're going to build mansions for you. Mansions. And so we listen to these things, but then somewhere on the inside, and I don't know where it happened, somewhere along the way, we got this little, I don't want to ask for too much. I don't know why it's there, because we serve an infinite God, so infinite. And leave it up to God, because he, <laughs> he takes human's most valuable possession and he makes his roads with it you know there's been people all across the world that have given their lives for what gold right you remember that i won't go into that but but for gold gold you ever played the oregon trail where were they headed 
right? They want to go get some gold out in, out in California and Oregon. They're head, headed that way. That's why they're going. And they gave, right? Many of them got dysentery, apparently. But that happened, right? At least according to the game. But the point is, is, is on, a, on a serious note, people have given their life for the stuff. And God says, great, I'm going to take what you value and I'm just going to pave my streets with it. I mean, what do we pave our streets with? Like some old rock, right? It's all, well, just crush that up and get some tar and we'll, we'll make it, right? And he's like, we're going to do it a different way. That's the God you serve. Y'all with me? We serve a big God, a God that is more than enough on earth as it is in heaven. You know, we talk about God's love because it's one thing to have a, a, a billionaire father or an unlimited father, but if you don't believe he loves you, it doesn't really matter, does it? Let me tell you this. If you could grasp just a glimpse, and I don't mean, even mean a big, I mean a glimpse of how much God loves you. Listen, we'd never worry about anything ever again. Nothing, nothing. If you, you say, and by the way, does anybody need to receive from God? Has anybody got anything in the world they need to receive from God right now, or is that just me, right? Okay, one hand, me and you, right? We need to receive from God. Let me tell you, if you're having, if you're having trouble receiving from God, I'm going to tell you how to do it right now. This is how you receive. You've got to dial in. It's already been given. Do you all know that it's been given? Hey, look, before I go into that, Romans 8.32 Let's pull that up. Romans 8.32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he also with him, not for, how will he not freely give us all things? What things? Why would God deliver up his son, his most valuable possession in the world, his son, give him, but he said, you can have my son, but I'm not giving you healing. You can have my son, but hey, I'm not going to really help you in this bind you're in on the finance. Why would he withhold from, the, if he gave us, let me tell you something. He gave us everything. When he gave us Jesus, he gave us everything. Y'all with me on that? Can I get a good amen? Amen, right? We got it all. We have it all. And if, if we could realize his love for us, I promise you, that you want to receive you want to dial in your receiver? Focus on God's love for you. You focus on how much he loves you, what he's done for you through Christ Jesus, you're going to be able to receive. If you have a hesitation and you think, oh, I don't know if I really deserve this, it ain't happening, right? Focus on that love. And then, you know, we read these scriptures. You know, how much will he give us all things? We, we read that. But... Let's go in, in a logical standpoint, and we go, well, what parent would ever want their kids to be sick? What, what parent? I mean, think about it. Your kids, would you ever want to teach your kids a really good lesson by, you know, getting their car repoed? Is that really a, something valuable to learn? Or, uh, you know, maybe let's get them boot, boot, booted out of their house and they can live on the street for a while. Just, to, you know, just to be a good father and teach them the lessons of life. Is that something that would be good for them to learn? I would like to learn that based upon somebody else's example. You with me? Not on, my, my, not, on my, not on my kid's example. Well, how much more does your heavenly father want you to see, succeed? Say this, how much more? How much more? Matthew 7, 11. It says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good, give, give good gifts to your children, how much more... Will your Father in heaven give good things or good gifts to those that, how much more? I mean, we know, we know how to give good things to our kids, but how much more will our Heavenly Father give to us? But there's a key. Let me tell you, there's a part of this you've got to understand to those that ask. But I don't want to ask too much of Dad. Oh, ask away. You, you, you can't ask too much from him. Y'all believe that? Amen. Amen. 1 John 4, 18. I told you that, that if we focus on his love, it would cast out every worry and every fear. And here's what it says. It says, such love has no fear because 
perfect love expels all fear. It says if we're afraid, it's because of the fear of punishment. And it shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid when we have a sickness or a, a financial setback or an issue going on? with a, Why are we afraid? Because we don't know if God's really got us. Right? We think he does. But what if he doesn't? You want to cast out all fear, every fear? What does he say to do? Perfect love cast out what? All fear. All fear. Are we good? Do I have to convince you anymore? Do we need to go into detail on how much God wants you to be a success? And I might even say wealthy. Is that okay to say? Oh, I got a yes. I got an amen. Love it. Somebody's on board with me. Here we go. So if we're good, I was going to read a whole bunch of other scriptures, but I think we're good. I think we're on the same page. All right. So even though God wants us to be a success, and even though God wants everybody in the world to be reconciled unto him, is that going to happen? Is everybody going to be saved? Even though Jesus died for the sins of the whole world? No. Is everybody going to be a success, even, even though it comes with the covenant that we have with God? No, there are some things that we have to do, some things that we need to put in place to be a good steward. And I'm going to start with number one. Here we go. You ready? You better grab a vision. You better get a vision for your life like yesterday. That'd be a good day to get one, right? What do I mean by vision? A vision is, is a preview that God gives you for your future. I mean, you get to see it. It's a preview. You get to watch it, and you get to see it. And as you watch that vision, and as you embrace that vision, and as you talk with God about that vision, it starts to come to what? Come to pass. That's right. That's right. There's a scripture in Proverbs 29, 18. And what it says, and you, I know you've heard it. I'm going to see if you've heard it. It says, without vision... The people perish. We all know that one. They perish. That's right. But it's shocking how many people don't have a vision. <laughs> right? We know the scripture. Are we following a vision? You know, when I, when I looked at this scripture, I was looking up different versions. I wanted the, the people perish version because that's the one I knew, you know. But then I started reading other versions and it was like, without vision, it was the people run wild. They run wild without a vision. Without vision, the people cast off restraint. Restraint, restraints. I mean, they just bust out of it, right? It's kind of like this. I started thinking about what does that even mean? Without why would without a vision, they run wild. You know why? Have you ever like got off a diet? Have you ever been on a diet and then got off a diet? You know, you know what I'm talking about? You're like, oh, I finished my diet, and then you wake up in a cloud of Cheeto dust. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're like, what happened? And you kind of come out of it, and there's bags everywhere, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Right? You run wild because you, you've, you're done with the vision. You had this vision. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get this result. Things are good. And, and, and Jen, you, you know, she about once or twice a year, my wife, Jen, she, she knows when it's coming. I'll be flipping through Netflix and um, I'll find a new documentary about health and about, you know, the benefits of fasting or, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? Benefits of fasting and eating the, I know this is shocking, like fruits and vegetables, you know, and I'll be like, man, that's a good idea. Fruits and veggies. And I will, um, I'll get so excited that about, you know, 30 minutes in, I'm like locked in and I know Jen's looking at me going, oh. You know, here we go, right? And I'm like, honey, she's like, I already know you're going to go on a fast, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in, babe. I'm doing it this time. I'm doing it. And, and you know, it's like a 30-day deal. I'm all excited. And I'm telling you this, for three days, I am untouchable. I mean, three days, you could bring a pizza to me and stick it in my, and I'm going to be like, get that out of here, right? I don't eat pizza anymore. I'm a new man. Day four comes around, and I'm like, hmm, that pizza does smell pretty good. Day five, I'm like, ah. And by then, I'm already questioning why I'm even doing the fast. Y'all with me? Why, hey, honey, why am I even doing this anyways? And I'm like begging her to talk me, you know, to get off the diet. You know, I'm like, do I even need to do this? No, I don't, do I? And then what happens is 
Day five or six comes, and that's the, the Cheeto dust deal. That's where I end up. And here's, here's what I found out. I used to wonder, why does that happen? Why does that happen? Here's why it happens. Because I forgot the vision. The vision was, was the fast and the health benefits and the longer life and the things that I wanted. Those, that was the vision. But three days in, I forgot the vision. What I figured out, if I'll just rewatch the documentary on day three, I'm good to go for another three days. For real. It's amazing. And I get remotivated. Well, that's our vision. God's given you a vision. And in fact, some of you guys have had a vision in your heart from God for a long time. And it's there. And you've been thinking about it. Today, I'm going to try to get you out of the think about it stage. That's my goal. You say, ready? What are we talking about today is getting you on the move. Okay. On the move. We got to keep the vision. We got to keep the vision in front of us. Once he gives you the vision, keep it in front. Next thing is, is we, got, we need to be dreaming with God. You know, I love, I, I mean, in fact, here's, here's part of my thing. I'll go at night usually and I'll just set out and I've got a rocking chair and I usually pull it out from under the porch and I just sit up there and stare at the stars and I sit in my rocking chair and I just talk to God. That's, that's kind of my thing. People say, oh, you aren't getting up in the morning and praying? Oh, man. More, I told you I don't make it to the 9 a.m., right? Y'all know that. And, and, but the thing is, is that my, my talk with God has been, Lord, Lord, expand my vision. Help me dream big. I mean, he's a big God with unlimited resources. Lord, let me not limit you. I want to go big. Let's go out swinging, right? Let's do this. And, and I encourage you to have those talks with God. I mean, I love sitting down with God and say, Lord, and even more so, Dad, Dad, let's go do something great together. We get one life. Let's go out and do something great together. And that could be big or small. You know, the Lord has given us all different talents, abilities, and things to use for what? For the kingdom. I encourage you, find out what those are, get with God, ask him what the plan is, and I give you my word, he'll make it known. He will make it clear. 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.9. This is one of my all-time favorites. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined. What God has prepared for those that love him Anybody love God in the house today? Amen, right? Let me tell you, you qualify then because he says that no eye has seen and no ear has heard and you can't even think it up it's that good. And I, I can tell you this, I can come up with some really good thoughts. I mean, you say, what, what would your best case scenario be? And I can get creative. And he's like, yeah, that's cool. That's good, little boy. But you, ha you can't even, it's, it's like this. You can't even think about it in the sense of I want you to try to think of a color that you've never seen before. Go for it. You might start shorting out, okay? But, but, right, you can't do it. You can't think of a color you've never seen before. You can't imagine the good things that God has planned for you on earth and in heaven and in the future. You just gotta, you just gotta grasp hold. You gotta get hold of it. You know, old Mark Twain, is that okay? Proper... She makes fun of me. I used to call him Mark Twain, Mark Twain. And she said that was not right. It's Mark Twain. Mark Twain, the writer of Huckleberry Finn, right, and Tom Sawyer, he said this. This is, this is uh, there's some wisdom in this. He says, I can teach anybody how to get what they want out of life. The problem is, is I can't find anybody who can tell me what they really want. I think there's a lot of people out there that knows, they know what they'd like to have if it like just showed up at the door one day. There's a lot of people that know, yeah, it'd be cool if I had an extra meal laying around. You know, that'd be cool. But, but guys, you know, and I know, most of that stuff didn't just, just walk through your door, right? There takes, there takes a vision, there takes a plan, and some action involved. Would you agree? Yeah. You know, we got to live life on purpose. I'm going to give you um, a few areas to, grab, to talk with God and get the vision for your life. Number one, we need to get a vision for our life in faith. What do you want your walk with God to look like on this earth? What do you want? I mean, if I said in a perfect world, what would you, 
What would your walk with God look like if it could be this way? Ask God that. God, what do you want my walk, our walk to look like? How, how intimate can our relationship be? Can you take me where you want to take me, Lord? Can you give me a picture of what that looks like? So we need to get it for our faith. Next thing, we need to get it for our family. We need a vision for our family, our family life, right? Um, I've got a friend of mine that he goes to church here and he was talking about his kids. He's got three kids and they're, they're a little, little older, uh, junior high, high school, uh, just graduated kind of deal. And uh, he, but he said, man, they would always fight and bicker and just always messing with each other. I mean, y'all can't relate to that, right? No, your kids, my kids are perfect, right? But his, maybe they weren't as perfect. But, but the point is, is they were always getting after each other. And he's like, I need a new vision for this. I'll tell you what I want, Lord. I want a family of kids that love each other, that want to hang out with each other, that want to be with each other, that want to do things together. And, and he said, man, it took he said, it took a while for this to happen, but he said he got the vision, and you know what he did? He didn't just get a vision. He got a vision, and he started speaking. He started speaking life. Lord, thank you that you caused my kids to get along with each other, that they love each other's company, that they, they do things together, that they hang out, that they love being around each other. Lord, thank you for that. That's the vision you have, peace in my home, right? Those kind of things. And guess what? He said, one day, <laughs> he said he kind of looked up and, they were like hanging out with each other. And then he said, the other one came back for college and they're all hugging each other. And then next thing you know, one of them is driving, is driving the little one around and they're doing stuff together and they're hanging out. And he said, I watched it happen. It happened in front of my face. They like each other. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Get a vision for your faith, your family. What else? Finances. Should we have a vision for our finances? Let me tell you, if you don't, you better get one quick. Okay, we, we have got, my goal is to get you guys out of the wing it phase. Winging it's cool when you're 20, right? But after a while, it's not so cool. We have got to get a plan of action for our finances. <clears throat> what about for our friends, our friendships? What kind of friends do you want to have? I don't know. I, I, the Bible talks a lot about us hanging out with the right people. Would you agree? What kind of friends do you want to have? What, what do you and your friends want to do together? What does that relationship look like? Are we setting an example with our friends for our kids? Here it comes. You ready for it? You know I wasn't going to leave this out. Fitness. I said it. So we, we, we've got our faith. We've got our family. We've got our friends. we got, well, hey, we got to get fit, right? We got to, what I really mean by that is you got one earth suit, and you got to have an earth suit to play on, play on earth, right? If you lose your earth suit, that's all she wrote for, for this place, right? And you get one of them, and I encourage you to take care of it. <laughs> Did you know it even says that, that this is actually a temple of the Holy Spirit? Amen. It is. And, and we got to treat it good. We need to put good things in it. We need to feed it right. We need to get a vision of, Lord, what does health look like for me? Does that mean you got to live in the gym and only eat kale? I hope not, you know? But what it does mean is you probably need to pay a little attention to your body and what you stick in it. And you might have to exercise it. You might have to beat it into submission sometimes and tell it who's boss. But we got to get that vision for, for fitness. And last is a vision for fun. Do you know God wants you to have a little fun on this earth? Maybe even a lot of fun. What does that mean? What does a vision for fun even look like? A vision for fun might be, you know what, kids? We're going, family, wife, kids, we're going on one trip. I don't care. We're going somewhere. We're going to Port Aransas. We're going to, I don't care where we go, but we're going somewhere this month, and for the next 12 months, we're going somewhere. And you know what you do next? You write that thing in your calendar. And then you know what you do next? You sell your kids on how great it's going to be so you can't get out of it. You know what I mean? You tell them how great it is and how wonderful it's going to be. And then next thing you know, they start, when are we going? When are we, is, is it almost time? You got to put it in there. Realize, I know you think, oh, fun's easy. But let me tell you, work gets in the way of fun real quick. Do you notice that? Real quick. You got to schedule your fun. You got to get a vision. I want to go on 12 trips this year with my family. And then find out your reason why. 
And that reason why is your vision. Why am I eating this way? I want to live a long life. You reap what you sow. I want to sow good things into my body, right? I want to sow good things into my finance. I want to be prosperous. Keep that vision. Next, we've got a vision. What else we got to do? Number two, we better get a plan, right? You got to get a plan of action. Now, the good thing about a plan is that there's someone there that can actually help you with the plan. Because if you don't have, if you have a vision, but you don't have a plan, you know what that is? That's just a dream. That's just kind of like, oh, that's cool. That'd be neat if it happened kind of a thing. You know, a plan's so important, especially, um, y'all know Pastor Chris? And, uh, well, we grew up together. I've been running around in this church and way back, way, 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 way back when we were demoing the plumbing shop and all that stuff. Anyways, Chris and I were running around and uh, as we've grown up and, and things, we've had, of course, our boys. And we, one day we started talking about Zion National Park. Who's been to Zion? Yeah, is that place not amazing? I mean, that is, it is heavenly for sure. There's Zion and there's Bryce Canyon out there. And uh, I mean, there's just several of them. It, it is amazing. So I encourage you to go. However, we decided that we, it was going to be Chris and I, and we were just going to load up our boys, and we were going to go for like two or three days and just hit it. I, at the time, I owned uh, this little four-seat airplane, and I'm like, well, let's go. Let's just, let's just do it. Let's just go to St. George. You got to go to St. George, Utah. We flew out of Bridgeport. We're going to St. George. And at the time, I was like, this is a great idea. And, um, and it was, but it, we had a few intense moments. But, but um, I didn't just, you know, like, let's just get in the plane and go. Do you have gas? Well, I don't know. Um, I think so. It looks like we might. Uh, what about oil? Have you checked the oil lately? Nah, who needs oil? It's not a big deal. All right, I didn't, we didn't just go, uh, where's St. George? Oh, it's west. I think it's west. Awesome. We'll figure it out on the way. Y'all with me? I'm telling you this, I had like one of my best friends of all time and his boy and my boy in the play. You, I'm telling you, I did, so, I did some planning, okay? I, I made sure that we were going to be able to get off the ground and we had enough gas to get where we were going and, and right? And it, it's funny because that's very important if we're going to St. George, but guys, how important is it if it's your life? It's your life, but we don't, we just kind of, we're just kind of headed west, we're going to go west, and hopefully we end up in this vision, this God. Guys, we, we got we to gotta get it together. You know, there's a rule in aviation called the one in, one in 60 rule. And the one in 60 rule is this. If we take off from Bridgeport, we need to fly a 290-degree course straight to St. George. If I fly a 291-degree course, just one, or 289-degree course, then... I'll be in 60 miles, I'll be one mile off of my destination. So I'll be, I'll be there, but I'll be one mile off. So it's 804 miles straight. So by the time we get there, if I would have just kind of winged it and just let's go, if I was really, really close, but one degree off, I would have been 13.4 miles off of my destination. If I would have been five degrees off, so I flew a, 190, or a 295 instead of 290, I'd been 67 miles off my course. Now, praise the Lord for autopilot, okay? Literally. <laughs> I got up, and it's, it's easy now. You just put in where you want to go, get up there, and flip a button, and enjoy the, enjoy the, the ride, you know? But, but we don't have an autopilot with our life, do we? Do you have an autopilot? If you got one, let me know, because I'll use it, right? So, <clears throat> sometimes I hear people go, Brady, do I really need to plan? I mean, it's the end times. It's the end of days. This thing's getting wrapped up, and let me tell you, I believe you're right. It is the end of days. In fact, I believe it's the end of the end of days. I believe Jesus could come back right now, and I hope that he does. How sweet would that be if we all just took off right now? Man, that would be a deal, okay? But I heard Jimmy Evans say, he said, and, and if y'all, have y'all heard of Jimmy Evans? Jimmy said, um, he said, you need to plan like you're going to live for another 100 years. That's how you plan your life, you're, like you're going to live for another 100 years, but you need to live your life like Jesus is coming back today. 
plan for the next hundred years, but live like he's coming back tonight. Make wrong things right, right? And, and so, yes, it's important to plan. So what do I do? Proverbs 16.3 says, you need to commit your work to the Lord. Step one, commit your works to the Lord, and guess what? He'll establish your plans. Commit to him. Lord, what does that look like? Lord, I'm, my life is committed to you. I don't want my vision. I want your vision. I want to go where you want to go. Let's go there together. And he says, great. All I was looking for is your heart. That's all I needed. And then he gives you the plans. We're going to St. George. He says, great. Here's where you want to, this is where you want to stop and get more gas. Y'all with me? He determines it. A few verses down, Proverbs 16, 9 says, the heart of a man plans his ways, but the Lord establishes his steps. Isn't that good news? We got some help. Isn't that the good news that it isn't all on you to figure it all out? Man, that's good news for me. I've, I, I've, I've messed up a lot of things. I need the wisdom of God. And thank the Lord that we have it. And I think the reason that people get so tied up with a plan and why that's, it's easy to get a vision. I mean, look, I like to get, you know, get your dream board out and cut a picture of your yacht out and stick it on there and stare at it. I mean, that's fun. Yeah, that's fun. Where it gets serious, though, is when that plan to get it comes into place. Y'all with me? And why does that get so serious? I'm going to tell you why it gets so serious. Because you know that the second you commit and you go, we're doing it, honey, here we go. That's when the discipline kicks in. I, you know, do y'all remember, the 9 a.m. was like, what are you talking about? But look, do y'all remember these posters? They used to be everywhere. And it would say like some cool word like courage. And then it would say this definition of like the coolest definition of courage that you've ever heard, and have an eagle like flying over the mountains, right? And you know what I'm talking about? Anyways, this is what this definition of discipline reminds me of. And this is, this is good, I, and I really wish I would have came up with this, but it says, discipline is the ability to choose what you want most over what you want right now. Discipline is the ability to choose what you want most versus what you really want right now. Oh boy, I want some abs. They're out there, right? They're in there. I want them. I want to feel good. I want to play with my, my grandkids. I want to do these things. But these Oreo cookies look amazing. And I can always start when? I mean, I can start it tomorrow. I can start it tomorrow. And plus, we, you know... She accidentally bought whole milk. I mean, that's destiny, you know? Man, it's been a while. Isn't that good? And I mean, that, that's good. <laughs> oh, we already go there. But, but the point is, is, isn't that how it works? We got to be able to, to, and how do we choose what we want most? How do we do that? You got to keep the vision where? In front, every day. Every day, review that vision. Even the Lord said, and this was if you, if, if you wanted to be his disciple, the Lord Jesus said, you better count the cost. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some discipline. You better count it. And, I, and this is being a disciple, but this could be with, with anything that, that we're walking with him in. It says in Luke 14, 28, uh, 28 through 30, he says, Jesus says, suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Will he first not sit down and estimate the cost? to see if he has enough money to complete it. It says, for if he lays the foundation and he's not, not able to finish it, everybody that sees him is going to ridicule him. Thought you were on a diet. <laughs> uh, but the fellow, listen, to this. it says, this fellow began to build what he was not able to finish. And then Jesus goes on to say, imagine a king. King's going out to war. He's probably, he probably better do a head count before he sends them out. They've got 20,000, we've got 10,000. Are we ready to do this? So God's going to give you the vision. You ask him for it. God's going to give you the plan. He wants a willing heart. But let me tell you, before you just run out there, we need to count the cost. Everybody say, count the cost. All right. Next, you need to, you, you've got to sit down 
once you, you make this decision, once you get that vision and the plan, you better sit down with your spouse, sit down with your business partner, sit down with somebody, and you got to do some praying and some planning. Praying and planning. You know, uh, I listened to a thing, uh, it was over vision uh, for, it was Jesse Duplantis, if y'all have heard him, I like listening to him. And uh, he said he was building this big cathedral type thing, and the architect said, hey, we messed up. <laughs> There's got to be like a bunch of pillars to hold up the middle of this thing. And he's like, no, no, no. Jesse was like, we're not doing that. He said, well, if you want to keep your walls up, you're probably going to need those. And he's like, mm, no, no, there, God's got another way. That wasn't in God's original design. He's got another, another way to do that. And so they're working. There's workers, they're hammering, they're, they're getting it. And he says, uh, hey, everybody, come here. We got a meeting. We got a meeting. And so you got the structural engineer. You got some of the heads of this church. And, and, uh, and then you got the workers. And he brings them all over. And he says, we're going to pray. And I want you to listen for the Lord. We're going to pray. And I want you to listen. So they pray. Lord, we need, we need to know. If anybody lacks wisdom, let them ask. And you'll freely give. We need to hear from you on how not to put this giant wall or whatever in the middle of our building. And uh, so he says, Okay. Looks at the structural engineer. What'd you hear? He's like, I heard nothing. It's like, oh, okay. Next guy, one of the higher ups, said, what'd you hear? Nothing at all. I have no idea. And then they look to the next guy. The next guy is one of the workers, okay? And he's kind of already over in the spirit world anyways at this point. And he's like, man, I think I heard God. And we're like, really? What'd you hear? He's like, well, I think we need to do this, this, that. And, and the structural engineer was like, are you kidding me? He's like, that's exactly what we need to do. It worked, and they were able to do that. But, the God, but he heard God. They, they prayed and then listened. Isn't that something? You pray, and then you just be quiet and actually listen. It's awesome. God is so, he wants to do this life with you. You know, sometimes I think we think, oh, God's just, you know, maybe if we could throw up a prayer Maybe if he gets up there high enough, he might glance and notice it. Was that a prayer? Oh, maybe we'll let. He's here right now. He wants to do this with you, I promise you. You know, I can show any of you guys how to accumulate a million dollars from scratch right now. It's an easy formula. Here you go. Ready? Million dollars. I am going to give you one little, one little snippet here of finance. If you have zero dollars, but you start saving a thousand dollars a month right now, $1,000 at a 12% interest rate, 12% rate of return. At the end of 20 years, you'll have a million dollars. That's pretty cool, right? That'd be nice to know. People go, well, how do you get 12%? You can't get 12%. Oh, you can get 12. That's not the problem. The problem is, can you save $1,000? Could you save 1000 Probably could. You might not drive the same car that you're driving now. You might not live in the same house, but could you say, you could probably save $1,000 a month. See, there's a scripture that's in Proverbs 13.22. Proverbs 13.22 says, a good man, everybody say, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That's, that's a good thing? I thought God didn't want us to have anything. But he said, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Children. And by the way, did you know the sinner, sinner's wealth is laid up for the righteous? Y'all speaking that on the daily? What if you asked God a vision for your financial life and he said, take that scripture and run. You're going to leave an inheritance to your kids' kids. Well, the thing is, is that might help you adjust your life to be able to save $1,000. You know, the next one, 2 Corinthians 9, 10 through 11. Man, I love this scripture. It says, yes, so he said, he, he was telling them this, and he reminded them again, yes, you're going to be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. Isn't that cool? He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enrich you in every way so that you can always be generous. And listen, he says, when you take your gifts to those who need them, they're going to thank God. So two things will result from the ministry of giving, of giving. Who wants to be in the ministry of giving? 
By the way, guess what? You're all invited. We've got uh, two, well, I'm just going to tell you, you're called to the ministry. You've got two, two jobs. Every believer has it. You've got the, minis- the ministry of reconciliation. That's one of them. It's been given to every believer. That's where we reconcile people back to God. We say, come back. Come back to dad. Dad wants you back in the family. Come back. That's one job. And we do that by talking to them, and we also do that by the way we live. The other thing is, is you're in a ministry of giving. He has abundantly, generously said he'll provide all that you need. So then in that abundance, you can... You can give, not so you can hoard it up. I mean, listen, I want good things. But eventually, right, you go, okay, we need to bless some folks, right? We need to reach them. He said those two things are going to happen. One, he said that the needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met or the needs of the believer in the church will uh, will be met. And the second thing, you know what they're going to do when when you help them out financially? What are they going to do? They're going to glorify God. Isn't that a good thing? He said, not only are you going to take care of them, they're going to praise the Lord. You know, God, I I just, I really believe that he doesn't want us living from financial miracle to financial miracle. Well, we almost lost the house, but God came through and praise the Lord he did. Let me tell you, I've had plenty of financial miracles. Thank the Lord. But I don't think he goes, well, well, we got, you know, we, 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 God, God brought us a check. We, we were able to save the house. But we didn't change anything, so now we're about to lose the house again. So we're praying for another financial miracle. Are you with me? Eventually, he says, hey, kids, are you tired of eating dirt? It's time to get up. Let's change our plan. Let's change our actions. So God does want us to be a good steward. Number three, so we've got to get a vision. We've got to get a plan. And the probably, I don't want to say the most important part, but probably is doing what? Take a step of faith. God gives you the vision. He gives you the plan. The next part's on you. Is you got to step out there. You know, there's a scripture. I know you've heard it. It's James 2.26. It says, faith without works is, what does that even mean? Well, what, what does that mean? They say, well, you, you, you're a believer, but show me that you believe. Yes, I know you said you believe. Show me that you believe by the way you walk. Show me that you believe by, by coming with me. Show me that. You say you believe, show me. That's all he's saying. Now, listen, do I believe we're saved by our works? Not at all. We are saved 100%. Signed, sealed, delivered, paid. All of it is done through Christ Jesus. I know that. Praise God for that, Right? That I'll never be good enough, but it, he was good enough in my, in my behalf. Praise the Lord. But do, do we need to walk? Yeah, we need to walk. Let me tell you, there's a boatload of people who have not heard about Jesus, who have no idea. You guys know what's happening in the country right now, and it's going to take people like you to step out in faith to reach them. I promise you, he's got a plan for you. He has a vision. I trust God, but you know, Brady, I, I, I've, I've got a family I've got to take care of. I get it. Well, you know, I trust God, but, but uh, you know, these bills, these bills are piling up. I can't risk it. You know, I really do trust God, but, and he's given me a vision, and I know it's him, but, uh, you know, maybe when the kids grow up and move out of the house, right? Maybe then. You got to make a move. Guys, you gotta, you, you've got to call a play. And some of you guys need to call another play. Maybe you said, Brady, I've called a play and I've went out there and I gave it all I had and it didn't work out and it was tough on me and the family. And, and, and listen, and I get it. It's just like the little, the, the little two and three-year-old that, or one and two-year-old that's learning how to, how to walk and they're running and they just trip and they eat it. Y'all seen that cloud of dust and they're like in there and they're crying and you pick them up and you look at them and they're not bleeding and you give them a little pat on the hiney and they just take off again, right? That's us. That's us. We're like, Lord, I think this is you. I'm going, here we go. We step out, we trip. It's not as easy as we hoped it would be, but you know what? We get up, God picks us up. He says, that a boy, I'm glad you're doing it. But he doesn't say, well, I guess walking's not for you. Guess you're just not the walking type, Right? That's not what he says. He says, get up, let's go again. 
Let's go again. You know, um, <laughs> when I tell you this, I, what I don't want you to do is not spend time with the Lord and get a vision and not spend time with the Lord and get a plan, but just be like, let's go. And then you run out there in the street and you don't look both ways. You know what I mean? I, you, you, listen, I need you to be praying. I, I tell people this all the time. You either need to be praying on the front end or you're going to be praying on the back end. But either way, you're going to be praying. I promise you that. And, and I've done the let's pray on the back end plan and it's not fun. Like, like, you know, the, the opportunity, you don't really need to pray about that much because it's too good of an opportunity. Like, it's really, really good. So I, I, it must be from the Lord because did you read the, the stats on this thing? This, is, this has got to be God, right? Let's not pray into it. Let's just go. And then you find yourself in the middle of the night repoing a car with your wife and kids in the car. And, uh, you know, anyways, but that happened. No, so a, a quick, quick story. We had this, this automobile thing that we could go and it, we started a dealership and it looked really good and we were having fun and, and then uh, we decided to take it to the next level and we did and we hired some people in and they ended up buying some cars that we didn't know about and not getting the payments for them, you know, that kind of thing. And so we looked up in about two weeks and we had cars everywhere that we're trying to hunt down that we don't even know about. That's not fun. And then, so then I, again, I find myself, it's me and Jen, you know, I, we're in the bad part of, or the not so good part of town. I'm Barney fifing it over here with my pistol, right? And Jen's, got, Jen's literally putting a boot on a vehicle. My kids are in the backseat of the car eating Cheerios, going, what are we doing, Daddy? Be quiet, kids. <laughs> but, and let me tell you, you know who was praying on the back end? This guy. Lord, get me out of this. Let me get these cars and I'll, I'm done, right? All I'm telling you this, is you need to pray into this. Take that vision from God. Get that plan of action and go with him. I'm going to read you the nine most, com this is the nine most common regrets that people have at the end of their life. This was, uh, I was reading this blog. It was about uh, a hospice, somebody that worked in hospice for six years. And this is the nine things that she wrote about um, helping people exit earth. That's what they're doing at hospice. They're exiting earth, right? And number one, it says, now listen to this. Tell me if this lines up with the word of God. It says, number one, that they wish they had been more loving, loving to the people who matter most. Number two, they wish they had been a better spouse, parent, or child. Number three, they wish they had not spent so much time what? Shocking, huh? Shocking. Look at this. These are people that are about to leave earth. And they're like, man, if I could just go back, I wish I had taken more. I wish I had played it just so safe. You got the living God with you, right? You got the living God with you. They said they wish they'd been happier and maybe enjoyed life more. They said they wish they had lived their dream. They wish they had taken God's vision and went with it. So they wish they had taken better care of themselves. We talked about that. They wish they had done more for others and they wish they had chosen some more meaningful work. You know, it's like a flicker. Have y is anybody getting younger in the room? Has anybody figured out? I mean, like literally a couple days ago. So my kid now is, you know, he's 12 and he's like, Dad, can I wear your shoes? I'm like, no, those are my shoes. Man. And he's wearing them, you know. So, um, and, and, and my, my, he first, he started wearing Jen's like T-shirt, cool T-shirt, you know. But now I already know, guess what? He's moved on. He's, he's too big for her. So guess who, who shirts, right? And so I said, look, get your foot up here. And let's, and, and we put them barefoot. And, and I'm telling you, I'm edging them out like by a millimeter. I'm like, oh my gosh. The other day, I remember they just handed it to us the other day, and I was looking at them thinking, man. And now, I mean, it's amazing. Time is flying by. When's a good time to start this? Tomorrow, yesterday. You know, I believe you beat 95% of the population by taking the first step. Not, you're going to be 95% of everybody. Have you ever had that, uh, oh, I've had that idea. Somebody's making a million dollars over there, and you're like, I thought about that 10 years ago. You ever had that? Or does that mean? All right? You got to take the first step. Guys, we have the Holy Spirit living in us. 
right? Do you know the Holy Spirit said, listen, read this. John 14, 26. It says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, who's from the Father, the, the, the Father will send in my name. It says, he will teach you what? All things. Is that like, he'll teach you most things? No, he'll teach you all things. He'll teach you everything. I was listening to a, a podcast called How I Built This, one of my favorites. And um, uh, they were talking to the, Patag- the founder of Patagonia, and he ended up, uh, he was, they didn't have rock climbing here in America, and he was kind of rigging up his own stuff, and he went over to Europe, and problem was he kept ripping his shirts when he would rock climb. So in Europe, he needed a shirt, and he went in, and they have rugby everywhere, so he bought a rugby shirt. And come to find out, it was pretty stretchy, kind of looked cool, and, and uh, it was real durable. And so then when he went back to the States, everybody asked him where he got his rock climbing shirt, and he said, oh, um, well, I could get you one, right? And then he started selling rugby shirts as a rock climber. And then one thing, y'all, have y'all heard of Patagonia? But one thing that I thought was cool, he said, he goes, what I've done in my life it, is uh, I, I just, I get an idea or, or a concept, and he goes, and it felt kind of good. So he goes, I just take a step. And he goes, I'd see how it felt. And he goes, oh, that feels pretty good. And he goes, well, let's just take another step. He goes, I'd take another one. He goes, this is good. I'd take another one, and he goes, ooh, Ooh, I don't know about this. He goes, I kind of take a step back, reevaluate, and go from there. Well, this is a guy, I don't know if he's a believer. But I know this, you have the Holy Spirit who knows all things and will give you all things. It says that in James 1, 5, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you get to a spot, you take a step, and you go, I don't know what to do. No problem for God. He says, if you lack wisdom, let him ask God who will give to all, what? Generously said, he won't hold it back from you. Isn't that good? That's good news. You know, I tell people all the time, you want to grow close to God? Just start a business. You'll be praying all the time, right? <laughs> well, guys, uh, I'm, I'm going to get wrapped up here. I, I, um, I encourage you. You need to go on a God adventure. Anybody on a God adventure? I'm on like several of them right now. I really am. And, but I've, I've, we've, we went into business for ourselves at age 23, so it's just kind of been our life. It's just like, that's all we know. We go on God adventures. And some of them are tougher than others, some of them are more fun than others, but we, we're on. In fact, uh, I, we just, uh, it's funny, we started this new venture, just, just brand new. Can't go into a lot of detail, but we, it, it, it involves some specialized work. And some people ask me, they said, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, well, sure we can. You know, I mean, I'll find somebody that can, right? Hopefully. And, but yes, we can. And so we go and they give us a job. And I got to be honest, I walk into there and I'm thinking, oh boy, this is going to be interesting, right? At Google, get ready, right? You too, here we go, right? And, and uh, but you know, I wasn't worried. I'm like, we'll figure it out. God's with us. We'll find a way. To, and get this, this is classic God. This happens all the time. I get a call. So we're supposed to be at this job the next day. And uh, right before we go, I get a a phone call, and it's this guy I hadn't talked to in several years. I don't don't really even know him that good. He calls me. He says, Brady? I'm like, yeah. He says, I feel like I'm supposed to uh, ask you if you have some work for me. And I'm like, really? Um do you do, and I was like, this kind of specialized work? He's like, I've pretty much done that my whole life. I'm like, really? I said, "Um, are you available tomorrow morning, say, you know, 8 a.m.? He's like, actually, I am. I'm like, really? And anyways, let me tell you, he goes in, just crushes, knocks knocks it out of the park, loves it. I mean, I probably don't even have to pay him. He'd probably go do it. I, I mean, I don't know if we can work that. But, but he loved it and did amazing. And how? That's, that's just God. God said, hey, you need a little work? Because he, he needed to make some money for his wife's surgery. And, and what, well, why don't you call Brady randomly? Randomly. You with me? He's with us. Go, you need to go on an adventure. You need to walk with God. Oh, it's, it's fun. Let's take those talents. You know, God's given each one of you some talents. My wife's pretty good at a whole lot of things I'm not so good at. I got a couple on her, but she's, she's taking it, okay? But let's take those talents and let's multiply those for the kingdom. Let's grow this thing. Let's go do something 
with God. And I encourage you, not, don't wait for the perfect moment. Some of you guys are like, I know, it's just when things line up, just let me tell you, that day, when's that happening? When's perfect happening? It's right after never. It, it, you, you, got, you got to go now. I believe God will give you whatever you can believe him for. We're going to finish on this scripture, Ephesians 3.20. Think about this. It says, now all glory to God. Let's do this. Let's say glory to God. Who is able? You got to keep coming with me. I like it. <laughs> Through his mighty power at work within us, listen to this, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. That's our God. That's your dad. He's able to accomplish infinitely more than you could dream up. So, hey, listen, I heard that it takes the same amount of thought same amount of effort to dream big as it does small, so you might as well dream. You might as well go big with it. Why not? We serve a big God. We serve a big God. Well, guys, I'm excited to hear about your future exploits. With God, I, I want you over the next weeks and months and whatever happened, wherever God sends you, whatever God does, whatever God tells you, I want you to come and say, Brady, we did it. We did it. We were a little nervous, but we just took a step anyways. It's changing our life. We're going with God. Deal? If that happens to you, come talk to me. I'd love to hear some feedback. All right, guys, let's pray. Y'all ready to pray? Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name that's given above all names, the name of the Lord Jesus, your Son, our King, our Savior. Lord, I thank you that we have nothing to fear. You are with us. You said you'd never leave us. You said you would never forsake us. You said if we lack wisdom, we could just ask and you would freely give and we would never have to worry. Well, Lord, that's what we're doing. Lord, every, everybody that you've put a dream and a vision in their heart, in this room, Lord, I pray that you would see that vision through with them. I pray that they would reach out to you and they get a plan of action. And Lord, that you would give them the courage and boldness to step out in faith and go do something great in this world, Lord, with you and for you to expand your kingdom. Lord, we are unstoppable because you are with us. And Lord... I pray that we give you all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen.